most people on the call now, looking at our list of attendees. So I guess we'll get started here. With hello everyone, uh, as you've seen from the introduction we've given, uh, we're here to talk about the iTest system uh, plugin multi-deck today. And just before we continue, I want to make sure can everybody hear me all right? I guess if you can't hear me, you can't really respond. I'll type in the chat. I can hear you fine. I can hear you fine. I can hear you. All right. Well, I think that's uh, almost everyone. So it's good. I uh, guess we're getting started. So the, as I stated before, the purpose of today's webinar is we're going to introduce the PDAC plugin for the ITM iTest system software. Just to kind of talk about who we are, my name is Chase Petzinger. I'm a software developer here at ITS, at uh, ITM. I'm a certified LabVIEW architect, and what that means is I do most of the development for the test system plugin that you're going to see today and uh, all our other test system plugins. And with me here I have uh, Todd Holkamp who can introduce himself. I'm Todd Holkamp, I'm a field test engineer that uses the software that Chase writes. Um, I'm a Category 2 uh, vibration analyst and uh, here to show you a little bit about this lovely software package we have. All right, and uh, just for some housekeeping purposes, I want to say that uh, this video is being recorded and will be uploaded to our website. I'll show you where you can do that at later. Also, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them into the chat window as we are not going to be answering questions during the presentation. However, we will have 15 minutes set aside after we complete to try and answer as many questions as you can. And uh, if there are any lingering questions after that or you have something else you wish to discuss, feel free to call us or uh, email us at the address is shown. All right, so this is kind of what we're going to be going over today. So we're going to say, what is multi-deck? Kind of give you an idea of what is it, what a kind of a deck is, if you're unfamiliar, and you know, specifically how multi-deck pertains to the rest of our test system software. When's an appropriate use of uh, multi-deck? What situations warrant it versus another ITM plugin? And then Todd's going to have a nice demo for us where he's going to show you um, basic configuration, running of multi-deck, kind of the data that's being produced, and then we're going to have that question and answer session that I talked about later. All right, well, jumping uh, right into things, so what is multi-DAC? Well, you know, with multi-DAC, it's a data acquisition plugin, means it's a software that uses for acquiring the data, and the advantage here is you're able to collect and stream data from multiple DAC devices at once and save all those results to a single file. Multidec also provides a variety of data views that allow you to view and analyze the incoming data in real time. We currently have four different uh, types of these views, which we'll be showing you some of those later in the presentation. Another benefit of this Multidec is it allows for automatic file saving that you can uh, set up before your test, and this allows you to control and organize the creation of multiple data files during a test based on a variety of criteria such as time or file size. All right, when to use Multidec? This Multidec was originally created about four years ago to address the problem of needing to acquire more channels than a single chassis could support. And uh, we've been adding additional improvements and capabilities ever since. So right here you see a multi deck works with a wide variety of NI chassis and modules, uh, many of which, if you wanted, are able to be rented from us here at ITEST system, or at ITM. So when to use multi deck with, uh, versus other ITM plugins. So again, like we had stated before, the big advantages here is when you have high channel counts, 
uh, you can use multiple chassis. Uh, recently, Multidec has also uh, allowed us to synchronize that data across multiple chassis using the NI9469 sync module. Multidec is also really nice if you need to save data of files of specific sizes or lengths like we had uh, stated before, which is different than a lot of our other data acquisition plugins. Probably the only uh, time when you would use a different type of data acquisition plugin is if you were taking maybe a small channel count and only needed a short amount of data. You could use something like our ITM uh, time history deck, which is a very quick to configure and easy uh, data acquisition software. Or if you needed some type of uh, triggering based on a condition, we have the ITM remote deck, which allows for that. Uh, probably the only other disadvantage of Multitech is there is no internal reporting. However, there, uh, we have several DACs that do have that, such as our FFT DAC and uh, some other custom acquisition plugins that we've developed for specific customers. So here coming up, uh, we're going to show you also some of those real-time views, which is another huge asset here you can look at your data both in just real time, maximum, minimum values, as well as some analysis views all at once. So here, Todd, if you want to talk about an example of uh, when people we use multi-deck software for a specific application. Yes, recently we uh, faced a challenge of testing a large complex on highway vehicle. We knew that it would take hundreds of channels to collect the data that we wanted to measure uh, the loads of this large piece of equipment. Uh, with the use of multiple chassis and the NI9469 sync modules, we're able to collect over 200 channels of accelerometer and strain gauge signals, plus speed and GPS. All at once, uh, all synchronized, allowing for synchronization of that, that system. Yeah. Thanks, Todd. And yeah, if you're uh, interested in more on that particular topic, we have a case study of that application available on our website, which is uh, shown here, itestsystem.com. So now we're going to jump to the part of the presentation where Todd actually shows the software in action. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the measurement and automation explorer software. And as you can see, we have four CDAC chassis connected to this computer right now. and the main thing I wanted to show you, obviously, we have the 9469 sync module connected. And I'll show you how we check the synchronization of our system. Basically, we'll discover or verify connections. I'll just click discover. It's going to go in and check and see what's available. It is connected and synced. And you can show a diagram of the actual setup and how the, those chassis are connected. The green lines give us an indication that we have a good connection and we'll have a synced system. Uh, if it's orange dotted lines, that means they may be uh, connected incorrectly. And obviously, the black uh, dashed lines let you know that things are completely disconnected. Right now, we have a system that is synced and communicating correctly. Go ahead and transfer into the iTest system configuration file where we can see we have those four chassis active, all synced. What I've done is created a single multi-DAC plug-in DAC. And the way we do that is we've got a multi-DAC and we add the DAC. So what we have is we've got our single DAC with four, uh, one channel per chassis as a uh, it's going to be a voltage channel that goes into each of these uh, chassis, and it's got a, a switch connected to it, and this is going to allow us to confirm a good synchronization of our system. I was just going to show you real quick what we have is I'm actually going to be sampling at 51,200 hertz per second through these four chassis, just one channel each, so it's four total channels. But this will give us a good look at the, the actual uh, 
high speed synchronization. Go ahead and start the DAC. One thing uh, we'll notice is that it does take a moment for the DAC to come up, so don't worry that the uh, the software is hung or it's not doing what it should. It basically what it's going to do is it's going to go through and do a check that the system is connected and everything's uh, hooked up the way you, you said it is in your configuration. Basically, it goes into facts for you and checks that uh, configuration in the uh, sync of the devices. Here in just a moment, it'll bring up our main window for the data acquisition uh, for the multi-DAC plugin. What we're going to see first is uh, a main screen that's going to basically give us a digital readout of every channel that we would be recording. And it's going to give us max and min values, and you can set alarms for channels to highlight at specific values. That should be coming up here in just a moment. This is just a nice additional feature that we've recently uh, added in that really verifies that your synchronization is hooked up correctly and uh, it takes a lot of the onus off the test operator to worry about, oh, do I have uh, this cable plugged into the right slot? Yeah, like I've uh, stated before, I'm sure this is kind of a lot of information to be throwing at you at once, but we'll have plenty of time to answer some questions afterwards. So what we can see here is uh, this is the digital readout that I was mentioning. We've got our four channels that we're collecting data or will be collecting data on. Gives you a real-time value, a max and min, RMS, and these are the max and min values we have assigned to those channels. I can just give you a quick stat to show you that this is hooked up. Real-time value should jump to about 3.5 volts. Uh, which it did, and our max value is now what I'll do is I'll show you some of the custom data views that you can set up for multi-DAC, and we would access those just by jumping from the real-time view to the data views. Right now I've got one set up, and the way I set my waveform graph, form graph up was I went right-clicked and clicked New, then created a new waveform, and you can see it opens up a window. This is actually the window that I have selected right now like a channel to view and set the amount of samples for the graph and it's going to show you a real-time plot. There's a few others that you can choose from by right-clicking in the window. You can do a list box which is basically a similar digital readout. You'd right-click again to configure and select the channels that you want. View the appropriate properties for those channels that you want to view as well as precision for those uh, values. So this is basically just a digital readout. You can see we had in our configuration a warning limit set to about 75% of the max or min value. So that's why that's highlighted yellow. If it exceeds that max and min value, we have said it will turn red. So that's the list box. We can also look at real-time FFT graph. Of accelerometers, that's good to have. We don't have any plugged in right now, but you could configure that to a channel and uh, set the appropriate settings. Not very exciting with the voltage channel. You can also create a digital TAC channel. So if you have some type of speed sensor for your uh, that's hooked up for your test, you could configure it to pick up a pulse your thresholds and your pulses per revolution and you could be viewing real-time RPM uh, of your device, your test device. And probably the most powerful thing of all with these data views is they are persistent between tests. But once you have all your views and settings exactly the way you want them for a particular test, I was going to show you can save your layout and then as soon as you launch the deck again, all your windows all the correct channels selected and all your scale set will be the same. Another nice feature is you can lock these these windows wherever you want. So if I always want it to be in this position, I can move them around and lock it. I can 
lock that particular window. I can still resize it, but I can't close it. So if I wanted to create a new waveform, I could pop it up and maybe I could just look at one channel independently. So what I'll do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and start the data collection. And we're going to show our, our views. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the switch a couple of times. And then we'll check and see how well synced our system is. So that should flip back to zero voltage. Back to three volts. Back to none. One thing I didn't point out in the configuration when, uh, before I brought the DAC up was a nice feature is that you can actually save, uh, view the data right after you save the data. So we'll just call this sync check. And what it's going to do is going to bring up a viewer right after we take the data so we can quickly view our results. Now, you can see I've just added all four channels, and it looks like there's only one channel there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these plots a little more visible, and then I'm going to zoom in and show you just how well the system is. So if we zoom in, we're sampling at 50, over 50,000 hertz, so there's a lot of points in there. So we can zoom in a lot. And the software we're viewing this on right now is the ITM test view software, which is, as you can see, automatically accessed from within multi-deck, but can also be used independently to view a wide variety of uh, TDMS format data files. Exactly. And you can see from this plot right here that uh, with all four of those cha channels between four different chassis, uh, we've got a very very precise synchronization at 50, over 50,000 hertz sample rate. That's pretty much what I wanted to show everyone. I'll close this back and show you. This is the, the box that I picked to preview the data on the save and the uh, configuration. All right, well, thank you very much, Todd. And that was just kind of a our brief introduction of the multi deck plugin. Right now we're uh, going to be kind of taking questions and talking about uh, what we've just gone over. So uh, as you can see, the multi deck is a simple to use but powerful tool when collecting large channel counts of synchronous data. We're going to now kind of start the Q&A portion by answering the questions posted in the chat window. So I see we have a question starting from Ryan Welker. Asks, can you connect sync to multiple chassis to a single chassis? As in, hook up uh, CDAC chassis 2 and 3 each of the sync card on CDAC 1. I think that's possible. Um I think that would be what they consider the start uh, configuration for synchronization. What I've used primarily in the tests I've used the synchronization has been the, what they call the daisy chain uh, way, to, way to synchronize your chassis. Yes, uh, you are correct. Uh, so if you look at the NI9469, it has three input spots uh, specifically to allow you to connect uh, two chassis uh, to a single input for a variety of different configurations. I think, uh, like Todd stated, he primarily uses the daisy chain method, but there are additional connection methods which can be viewed at the NI website on the 9469. And if you have a test coming up, uh, we'd be more than happy to kind of walk you through the various configurations. Right, uh, thanks, Ryan. Uh, does anyone have any other questions now? All right, well, it sounds like uh, we did a pretty thorough job here. Um, if you think of any questions afterwards, then feel free to email myself or uh, Todd Holcamp or call at the number we have listed.
also uh, just let you know, we will be sending a brief survey um, to get your feedback on our webinar. This is our uh, inaugural webinar, so again, thank you for attending. Uh, the survey will be really quick, simple things like how is this sound in video quality, uh, what kind of additional topics would you like to see. As you can see on here, we have our next webinar scheduled for October 2nd at uh, the same time. We'll be continuing looking at the multi-deck. This is just more of a general overview um, and following in the series. Next week will be an in-depth look into the configuration portion of multi-deck and will be more of a training webinar versus kind of the introduction that we had today. And then we'll be uh, continuing on the next month in that series. Also, uh, be sure to follow us on our uh, LinkedIn page, search for integrated test and measurements, and uh, visit our website at itestsystem.com. And like I stated previously, this uh, video will be uploaded and placed online there for you to see. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I guess that concludes our meeting, unless anyone has any questions that are just going to Oh, I have a question from Rob Vickers. Is it possible yet to use remote deck in a multiple chassis mode? Um, in the future of multi deck, we are looking to integrate triggering feature that is present in remote deck into multi deck. Though, oh. see, we have a question for Tim asking, "When is our next webinar?" Is that um, we're hosting it this October 2nd, which is roughly uh, a month from now on a Thursday at o'clock Eastern time. Okay, but a month from now. And for you, the topic will be uh, continuing on the theme of multi deck. It will be more in the configuration portion of multi deck. And uh, more in a training uh, feel to it than kind of the introduction that we gave today. See you again next month. I'll be uh, sending out invitations. Don't worry.